Welcome to the Nav Viking tutorials. I'm Johannes Goodmanson, founder of Anecta, a Microsoft Dynamics NAV Gold certified partner. Hello and welcome to the Coffee Mug tutorials. Um, what we're going to go through today is uh, Business Central and Power BI. Um, Last video, we actually did do uh, some Power BI. We went into Power BI, connected up some tables. We created this little uh, screen here uh, where we're using the item budgets to do item um, estimates or item sales estimates, and then connecting that to actual sales and showing the difference. So right here, we see the sales amount. This is the uh, estimated sales amount and the actual sales amount. So, but one of the issues with this is that we have no date range on this. Uh, I can't filter on like a particular day or a month or something like that. So how do we actually add a filter for dates into the Power BI? So that turns out to be not completely obvious, but once you know it, not that hard. So I'm going to go through that right now. And I know I'm kind of diving into Power BI and say, wait a minute, this is uh, this is like NAV Business Central, right? But no, it's not. It's 365. And 365 is everything Microsoft that connects all around. So we sort of got to get used to like being in all of these applications and thinking of them like they're all part of uh, Dynamics Business Central. So into Power BI we go. <laughs> All right, so uh, this I have here, and I'm going to just jump into Power BI, and I'm going to show you the result of what I did first, okay? This is going to be a little bit different because uh, it takes a little uh, effort to do this, not huge. Um, so I'm not going to be typing here and making mistakes. I'm just going to show you what I did, okay? So in here, we have the same table as we had before, except I have a slicer in here. Now, a slicer is this visualization right here. Uh, and it allows you to actually put dates. Now, the slicer, if you connect it to one of the dates of like the budget entries or the item ledger entries, it will only connect to one of them, right? You can only connect one date into the slicer, but you want both dates. You want actually all dates of 2018. So this is where the issue comes in. Uh, you need to connect the slicer to a date table, uh, which you don't have yet, right? But I did that, uh, and as you can see, um, if I, you know, move this around here, like we have no estimates in March. Uh, if I add April into it, we have the estimates in here, and it just accrues the uh, the sales from March to April. If I look only at April, you can see that here are the actual numbers for April. Uh, this was the sales estimate for April, April, and this is the actual sales for April. So this is all jiving pretty nice with uh, numbers of months here. And I could have done dates like weeks, um, days, whatever, doesn't matter. I just decided to go for months. Um, okay, so how did I actually do this? Well, let's get into the details. If I go into the tables right here, I'm gonna just start um, with looking here on the side uh, up here. We have um, the budget entries. So this is the estimates. So if I click on that, you can see these are the estimates that we actually took in the last video. And then I had item ledger entries, um, which is all the shipments, all the sales. Um, and then we have the item card, which is all the items. And we connected the item to the item card, actually, to the item budget entries and to the item ledger entries. And we could just start dragging things in. So what about the date? Where do we get the date? Well, it turns out there is a date table in Business Central, sort of. Uh, and if you connect to that or to a page that has like, is a matrix built with dates, it will just load endlessly because it's just fetching endless dates because it has endless dates. It's auto-generated dates. Um, so we don't want that. What do we do? We actually create the dates inside Power BI. That's right we can actually create a table in Power BI. So it's up here in modeling. You can just say new table. And that's what I did. I created a new table. And I created a table called date table. And the date table is basically using this DAX uh, statement called calendar. 
And I put in the start date, which is the beginning of the year 2018, and the end date, which is the end of the year 2018. These are my dates. So you could do whatever dates you like here. Uh, it doesn't matter. And there is actually a version of this uh, which automatically builds the date range based on the data that you're working with. I didn't get into that, but you can test that around. It's, uh, it's kind of taking it to the next level. All right, so now here I have a um, calendar date table. You can see I have all the dates here. And I actually created two extra columns. I created month right here which is just grabbing the month part of the date. So just month is equal to month, date table, date, and then the week, the week number. Um, so I figured I might be able to filter on weeks too. So, yeah, who knows? Um, all right, so we have that in. I also created another table. Um, and let me go ahead and find that one. That's all the way down here, called months. So since the uh, uh, the date table uh, has all the dates and it, it's grabbing out the month number in a month column, you'll have like the number one a lot of times uh, for January, like 31 times. And then you kind of need to group that up into months. And I wanted the months to actually have a name, like January, February, March, April, May. And there might be a simpler way of doing this. But I was just curious of like creating tables in Power BI. What can we do? So I created this data table. The data table allows me to just say, okay, what uh, columns do you have? And what is the data in those columns? And the data is just given here as a set of uh, tuples or, um, yep, yeah, um, with uh, the data inside of it. So I have here the month number and the name of the month, etc., all the way through. So I got that. Now, what do I do with this? I actually go into the relationships here and I connect the date table to the item budget entries and to the item ledger entries. Now they are connected and I grab all the dates, which is great. Now I'm not connecting the slicer to the item budget entries. I'm not connecting the slicer to the item ledger entries. I'm connecting the slicer to the date table and the date table has all of that. Or even better, I actually group up the date table into month numbers, which is my new table here. And I connect the slicer to the months, which is connected to the date table, which is connected to item budget entries. So pretty sweet. Uh, now it's all connected up. So that gives me this. I can connect the slicer here. You can see I'm connecting it to month number. And over here, I actually have uh, just the standard stuff, actual sales, estimated sales, and the description of the items. And so now this works like a charm. I can actually just open this up from March to, um, to May. And here are the numbers. So that's how you actually connect with dates. Pretty sweet. Um, you know, this was 10 minutes. Not bad. You're in Power BI, you're in business intelligence. Not that crazy learning curve, right? So go for it. Start using it if you haven't already. Thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, thank you.